let me walk through what are the different ML and AI models we use across the steps. We use unsupervised clustering to group together millions of alerts coming from several sources into symptoms. And these symptoms can be used to correlate alerts into symptom groups, and that entails in noise reduction. We also use unsupervised clustering to group together the lock messages and see how this grouped or clustered log messages trend over time and if there are any correlation to point as to any root cause of issues. We also use a regression analysis to forecast alert volume for specific symptoms, specific alert conditions or for specific applications and trend how those alerts would appear over time. We also use um, regression to detect seasonality for alert volumes, log volumes, and also detect any anomalies that could impact your system. We use, um, we collect a lot of metrics for uh, incident triaging, and we use correlation of different time series metrics to see if any of those metrics are correlated and if they're impacting uh, your system and, and in turn go and infer the root cause from this correlated metrics. We also use classification to identify incidents that are similar so that this incident can be solved in a similar fashion and similar way. So um, as I talked about the three different um, um, models that we use, we use clustering, unsupervised clustering to group together alerts and logs to find out symptoms or trends of different uh, log symptoms. We use regression to, to detect seasonality, detect anomaly, and forecast how a certain log would be, you know, how certain logs would be trending, and what would be the forecast for a certain alert by, based on symptoms or based on certain conditions. We use classification to identify similar incidents and the similar incidents can be uh, solved in a similar fashion. So we would give recommendations or, or suggestions to users. We have seen similar incidents solved by increasing the, the DB partition. And so the next incident that comes at a similar symptom can be solved by increasing the DB partition. And we use classification to predict incoming alerts into different uh, symptom clusters. So now let me walk through where we use uh, how we use this in our uh, tool. So um, we provide um, user to run multiple experiments and then they can use this experiments to fine tune different parameters. And once they find that this experiment works best, they can use and activate it to, to to create different clusters or symptoms or different regression charts. So let me walk you through how do I create a unsupervised clustering model. And here I'll walk you through, this is uh, alert cluster. And uh, I would select alerts from, let's say from beginning of the year till now. So 1st of January till today use clustering pipeline and here we provide a variety of um, um, filtering mechanisms to see what kind of alerts you want to choose based on different applications based on stack based on severity and for our um, example i'll select all alerts and then we go through um, multiple steps we go through the the vectorization and for that we we have multiple algorithms that can be used and we recommend word to vec and what we tried out that gives you the most optimal um, vectorizations and the size of 30 uh, the dimensional of 30 and i'll use skipgram as my training algorithm with a window size of three um, three words on both sides of the the target word and uh, for the clustering options we can use stb scan db scan and k-means an HTB scan seems to give us a good result. 
I'll also choose a minimum cluster size of 50. And if the, the alert volume is really large, we can increase this minimum size to, you know, up to 1,000. And then the minimum sample as, you know, one. So based on the minimum cluster size, I can also select a minimum sample size. And uh, do I want prediction data which can be used for classifying newcoming alerts? And do I allow single clusters? So user can use this um, experiments and tweak at different parameters and finally arrive at as um, clusters that really match their need. So once they run this um, experiment, it goes and gets all the alerts from the system starting from the first of uh, the year and till, <clears throat> till date and tries to create different clusters for those. So um, let me go back and take a look at that, what we have created. So if you look at, we run many um, experiments, both the regression as well as clustering. And I see this one clustering uh, experiment is active and it created 34 uh, clusters. So let me go and see what are the different 34 clusters are. And if you look at it, these are the 34 um, symptom clusters that are created by my experiment. And this is the different symptoms that exist in this particular system. Um, interface is down, service SQL agent is not available, CPU utilization has exceeded the threshold value, device is unreachable by SNMP, device is unreachable by ICMP, and TV is not configured. And um, we use um, out on proprietary uh, D variable agents and D variable agents doesn't mean that you can do it at every level. It has to be very smart. And then we group together into different um, um, symptoms. Once the symptoms are created and, and it is activated, the symptoms will be available for creating your correlation groups. So I saw, saw the 34 um, symptoms and um, I would go and now create one policy, and that policy we be able to create uh, multiple groups based on uh, this. So I'll create a correlate to groups by symptoms. Section symptom groups. And I will do it for um, all minimum severity for this um, alerts groups would be, uh, let's say, critical. And the uh, expiry time in given cells in 30 minutes, auto clear after last update in minutes, that should be zero. And I would, I can filter, I don't need to filter anything now. I can say I want to group by um, symptoms symptom clusters, that's it. So now once I do this, I created one policy, and this policy, as the alerts come in, it will create multiple groups for each of the symptom clusters that we um, created in our experiment. So there are 34 uh, symptom clusters. So every time a new alert comes in, we'll try to predict into one of the groups, one of those clusters, symptom clusters, and create a group for that. So as you can see, once I create the symptom clusters and enable it, it will go and create multiple groups for, and, and also we, we show how many groups got created and how many alerts got matched into that group. So this is a quick and easy way for, for um, users without having to do a lot of analysis of what are the different alerts, how I can identify different burst alerts, how I identify different um, alerts for the different applications or different uh, assets. This is a quick way to just one simple um, experiment run. Uh, once you run the experiments and identify which is a right uh, cluster that for your for your need, and then once that is done, just create one policy, and that will create that will correlate alerts and uh, into multiple groups. So this is one way that we use uh, ML on supervised clustering to predict um, alerts into groups. The next, I would like to um, show you how we use um, uh, regression. 
uh, for regression, we um, run multiple experiments again, just like we had um, um, <clears throat> gone through here, multiple machine learning um, um, experiments. We had clustering and regression. And just like for uh, um, clustering, I again go through this um, pipeline, we call it uh, regression. I want to see how the critical alerts that are coming to my system over the last, let's say, three months, starting from May 1st to almost four months, and how they, how's my trend for this regression, was there any anomalies, and was there any um, <clears throat> kind of um, trend that will happen. So again, I'll, I'll see and only do um, Severity based um, uh, all critical alerts, critical alerts only. And then I'll go through the uh, different algorithms to do either you know, Facebook profit or, um, you know, um, different parameters that I can choose here to get it. Once around this regression, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. <clears throat> Those regression models will show up in my project. We have run multiple of those regression models. Let me go into that. And here, um, as you can see, we have created uh, regression models for a particular symptom, which is interface packet discarded exited a configured value. <clears throat> we have done it for um, alerts for the last one year. We've done for the alerts for um, CPE utilizations exceeded a certain threshold value, the configured threshold value. As you can see, this gives me the trend of my alerts for that particular symptom or particular severity or particular application over the time. And um, it also, I have also used to predict how the trend would be certain. So I ran this regression on August 17th and it gives the next seven days prediction how the trend for this particular alert would be. And this information can be used by operators to, to, to do some, you know, uh, proactive work in terms of certain alerts are um, becoming a trending high. They can take the remedial action to, to address those and not impact the services in your system or in a network. So these are the two um, uh, uses of clustering and uh, uh, anomaly detection and regression and forecast. I'll also show uh, uh, another example of where we use correlation for, um, <clears throat> so as we as we group this uh, alerts into groups and we create a, um, for each group we create an incident. And once an incident is created, um, most other our competitors, they would just uh, get some information about it and and do it. What we do is we go and collect variety of metrics for different assets that are in, in, that are that are um, affected by different alerts. We go to those assets and collect a lot of data. Um, as you can see, we discovered it has um, this many. There's a web web layer and a um, app connectivity layer, storage network layer. We detect just based on the IP address, we go and find out the different connectivity and we detect all these different layers. And from these layers, we collect a lot of metrics. So for example, for the website, we collect the app latency. How is my application latency over the time? We collect the number of calls from app dynamics. We go and collect the different uh, database uh, metrics from memory to um, the different uh, database bytes transferred, CPU says, and also different commands that were executed by the different uh, database services. <clears throat> and once we get this time series database, the uh, time series metrics, we correlate this metrics and see if there's a similar patterns for different metrics. So we, we group them into different uh, correlation groups. And then 
discord groups can be used to infer if there is a particular trend that is causing this incident. So that is the other place where you use correlation to, to um, identify or infer uh, the root cause. So these are the, the, the areas that we use. We use unsupervised clustering. We use a regression model for uh, anomaly detection, prediction of data, and we use classification to infer uh, the root cause of different <clears throat> uh, incidents. Um, uh, that is, um, these are the all different places we use ML for, um, you know, AI solutions. And we would be happy to provide more details if you 